Hi everybody, Nigel here with you, Nigel's Model Bench. Welcome back. Here we are now with part three of the build of this Hunley CS SHL Hunley. This is the Micro Mirror Kit in 135th scale. And this is part three, and this is going to be the last one where we're going to get it all painted and weathered and finished up and everything. So as you can see, I've painted it all black. Um, everything is painted black. We've got the 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 ramrod on the front that I call it, and you can see there the effect you can get with the tape. Remember I put Tamiya masking tape around there, and then I filled the end up with super glue and then sanded it out to get rid of the you know the overlap where you got the end of the tape, and you can see you get a a nice cylinder on there with no issues at all. So that's all good, and it's all sealed in with paint, and the last bit was glued down with super glue, so it won't just unpeel itself, it'll stay. Um the main charge here at the front that's been sprayed in gloss black. So we're now ready for that to get some Alclad brass, which I've got over here, unprepared again. It's got the Alclad brass there, polished brass. So there you go, I'll show you how that looks when we get round to it. Um, by the way, this is Alclad 2 lacquers, no longer available. Um, but now it's it's being marketed by MIG Ammo, and it's called A-Stand. And I'm led to believe it's exactly the same. Um, I'm not sure it is exactly the same, but certainly all the colours are the same and everything. The only downside to it, as I've pointed out before, the A-Stand bottles have a square shoulder to them. So you can't pour them into the airbrush because the pigments get caught up in the square shoulder. So you need to use a pipette to take them out. So be careful of that. Um, I got caught out on one of my builds. What was I was doing? I can't remember now. Um, I think it was on the Spitfire exhaust, wasn't it? I think it was on the Spitfire exhaust. Well, it might have been the Hurricane exhaust. And I couldn't get the colour to come out the bottle. And I realised that as you were tipping it, what it was doing, the pigment was all staying down in the corner as you tip the bottle. It was just staying, getting caught up in the corner. So, because uh, it's got a very, very low amount of pigment in it. And it's a very heavy pigment. And um, it doesn't just want to float out with the paint. Um, so, basically, here we have the, the model finished, primed. I did have a couple of little marks on it. I've had to go over and just sand. You can see I've got a couple of marks just visible in the seam, but they're going to disappear now because of what we're going to do. So what I want to do now is paint it. Now I don't want to go mad with weathering it and having it all rusty and everything. I just want to basically give it a bit of an interesting motley finish. You know I like my motley finishes. A bit of a motley finish. Um, it's going to be a very dark grey. We'll probably do um, LP65, which is rubber black, and then maybe some black highlights and bits and pieces. We'll just play around with it. Um, I've also got an AK real colour here. I've just noticed on the shelf, and that's blue black so we could play with that as well um, and then of course you've got the, the NATO black which again so you've got these three different blacks none of which are black so uh, you know you compare them to the the actual black of the sub and you can see that they are completely different colors but we can have a play but first of all I want to do a um, what's called a black basing effect and it gives us a nice mottled blo broken up finish and I'm going to go through two ways of doing it. First of all, we're going to look at manual, and I'm using white paint. The reason I'm using white paint is it's very, very thin. When it goes down, it will dry as light grey because it's so thin. And I'm only going to be putting one thin coat on. So this is the MRP Fine Surface Primer White. Again, available from Premium Hobbies. I love this stuff. It's very, very smelly. It's not good for you. So I'm not going to do too much here without being in the booth. Um, but I'm just going to show you how I do stuff, and then I'll go away and finish it off in the booth. But this stuff is, is absolutely brilliant. The downside to it is it absolutely stinks. But it dries very, very tough and very, very smooth. It doesn't have any graininess to it whatsoever. And also, um, I've done some tests. I think I've videoed it. And you can see that this stuff is very, very resilient to other paints. Um, I was actually speaking to Chris a while back over at Rally Car Miniatures. And he was having trouble painting a body shell. Uh, because the paint was attacking the primary use. So I said, try the MRP Fine Surface Primer. And sure enough, first time he tried it, it worked perfectly. So it's very, very good stuff. I'd recommend it to anyone. But if, you, if you're spraying in your bedroom and you haven't got a booth, don't, go, don't touch it. It's a, it's a health hazard. So what we're going to do is do a mottling effect. And what I'll do is I'll start on the bottom, because no one's going to see. Um, and what I've, I've got the air pressure on the airbrush set to about 10 PSI. So I'm just going to grab a, just check the flow, check that I haven't got tip dry because it is 
quite warm today. Also, make sure you haven't got too much paint in the airbrush. So you want low pressure, about 10 psi, and only a small drop of paint in the airbrush. Otherwise, what you're doing here, you're going to spill it if you have it too high. So what I do is come in very, very close, bring in the air, and then I'm just going to bring the paint in and go in nice and close. As you can see, it's quite difficult to get going. I think I have got a bit of tip dry going on here. There we go. And I'm just going to do this sort of squiggly effect. You can take the end off the airbrush. This is a very, very time consuming job. And I think today is a bit too warm to be doing this because I seem to be getting tip dry and hence I'm getting a bit of spatter going on. But it doesn't really matter. There we go. So that's the kind of effect you're after. That's not perfect. I, I can't get in close like I would. But because I'm on camera I need to get more up into that corner there. All this is just a random load of shapes in a panel so that when you spray over that will show through and it just gives it that kind of mottled effect. Now there is another way to do this and it's much easier. In come these Trinity Splatter and Trinity Splatter 2. These are from Ushi van der Rushton. Again, you can get these from Premium Hobbies. Don't forget NMB10, get 10% off. And there's two different sets there with different patterns. So you can see here we got, this is the Trinity Splatter. So this is, uh, here we go. This is the finest of them. You can see that pattern on there. And then you've got this one here, which is quite coarse. You've got this one here, which is even more coarse. This is great for military vehicles and stuff. Although I haven't used them very much. I did do a, a test video to get that mottled effect you get on modern fighter aircraft. And uh, it does seem to work very, very well. Um, and then this is set two. So again, you've got quite a coarse finish there. You've got like this cracked up paint finish there, which is nice. And there's another coarse finish there. So I'm going to do this with these. I'm going to give it a go right now on camera. So you can see how it goes, see how, how I mess it up. And I think I'm going to use the finest one. Actually, no, I'll use this one, actually. No, it's too much. I'll use this one. This is the finest one. No, I will use this one. You can see I've really thought about this before I started. And we've got this film on here. And obviously the film needs to be taken off. There we go, it's taking away bits of brass with it because it's so sticky. But that's okay. And then what we can do is come along with this and just hold it, hold it over the model like this and just spray through it. Now I'm not really sure how well it's going to work because of the, you can't get in close. But if you're after doing this with some speed, as you can see, you can get a very, very similar effect very, very quickly. Um, we can do the same back here. What you want to be careful of is using the same part of the sheet on bits that are next to each other. As you can see, it doesn't need to be perfect. Nothing needs to be... As you can see, you can get this mottled effect. It's not the same as that, but it's very, very similar. Okay, now I might be better off, I might have been better off using the finer one. But um, I think I probably would have been. But... Just go over it again if you want to get more sort of more areas done. And then of course you could come along afterwards and just go in freehand and make it a bit more fine just to get rid of the big black areas. Okay, so that's the sort of effect you could get, and you can see now they're really really similar. But um so I'm gonna carry on like this. I'll show you a bit more. It's going to be very difficult to do this bit down here. In fact, I'm going to have to do this freehand because I'm not going to be able to get this sheet into that corner, I don't think. Let's see how it looks. That's not too bad, is it? 
as you can see, we're trying to get a a random load of splodges everywhere. We don't want we don't want too much of the same. You see, I'm getting tip dry. It's a pain in the ass. This is the, the warm weather. There we go. So I'll carry on off camera in the booth because I'm getting tipped where I need to be going and just keep going rather than stopping and talking. So um, I'll get it all done and then I'll come back and show you what it looks like when it's all splodged up. I'd just like to show you guys something. I've been playing around with these and sort of learning a bit. I got, I'll be honest, I'm not too fond of this one. I think it's got far too many big holes in it and it's all just falling apart because it's got so many holes in it. As soon as you touch it, it just all breaks up. As you saw me take the plastic off, it pulled, pulled bits of metal out. Um, so I have been using this fine one and what I've realised is you can kind of get different effects with the same thing. And I'm going to try and show you now just in case you're interested in getting some of these. But if I, if I sort of concentrate on this area here, what I'm going to do is, what I've been doing, trying to do is stay between the panels. What I'm going to do is go around with the black afterwards and put, because I want it to be mottled in between the rivets, not around the rivets. So it's almost like pre-shading on an aircraft. Um, but if I hold this... I'll show you the difference. In fact, we'll do it along here because there are bits and pieces in the way there. This would be much easier. Why don't we do it on the bottom, actually? No, we'll do it on here. <laughs> right, so if I hold this really close and then just spray, as you can see, we get that kind of very, very spotty look. But if I hold it a bit further away, so it's like 10 millimeters away from the surface if the bloody thing would stay still, you can see we get a much softer look. So if you kind of go in between that, say just a couple of millimetres away, you get a kind of, you can see this is up close, this is a couple of millimetres, that's 10 millimetres, so or 5 millimetres. You can see you can get different effects with exactly the same part of exactly the same tool. So um, Get that tightened up and then we can go in freehand and just squiggle into the corners and stuff if we want to. What I also found is if you go like that and you stab at it, you can get a different... But I am suffering a lot of tip dry today, which is, which is unusual for MRP. But I don't want this this hard metal, metal finish like that because it's it's going to look too sharp but it's good to have variation over the thing you can see this area here is a lot softer than that area there for example and that's what we want variation all the way over so I'll just carry on and um, and get it all done but you can see the kind of effect we're looking for and as you can see it's a right bloody mess but don't worry about it because if you don't like it you just go over it and start again and there uh, this can be applied to anything. You can imagine this on the, on, a, on F14, on the back of an F14, yeah? Gorgeous. Right, there we go. <clears throat> All done. All mottled up. You can see we've got some good variation going on. Different types of mottling and everything. The whole thing is done underneath the whole lot. So yeah, we've made a nice mess. Next job now is to get some black and do some pre-shading along the lines to get some interesting effects going on. These are all cleaned up. All I do, I've got an old Cafe Creme cigar tin. Just put literally a few drops of Mr. Tool Cleaner. This was like, you know, half a millimetre deep. And then just drop them in the bottom, rub them off with a paintbrush nice and gently, and they come out nice and clean. Then you put the plastic film back on, and then they can go back in their packet, and they can slide together without damaging each other. If you don't put the plastic back on, they'll just all hook into each other, and you'll rip them all apart. So... Bear that in mind if you're going to get some. As I say, I've got these from Premium Hobbies. Um, not sure if he's got them in stock at the moment. He probably has. Um, but uh, as you can see, they work really, really well. And they're quick as well. Um, they're much better for aircraft and large surfaces. I'll probably use them on the Scammel um, trailer because they're better for large flat surfaces. than It's difficult to get this because what happens is you, you hold the, the panel there and then you sort of get a tight pattern here and it gets softer because obviously 
has the because of the curvature the 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 um the mask if you like is getting further and further away so it's very difficult to keep it consistent but that doesn't really matter you want inconsistency that's exactly what you want here we're going to have some trouble with these pieces of brass here you can see so much for the mr mr hobby um metal primer you can see we're already just rubbing paint off with a finger it's just there is i can't find a good resin uh, a good um photo etch primer uh, etch primer <laughs> easy for you to say and we've done all the accessories and bits and pieces as well so while that's all just drying off i'll show you how i'm going to do this now this is as i say this is the alclad polished brass it's very very thin and you need to make sure it's absolutely fully masked up, uh, mixed up. I can't really talk today. Um, because if you don't, you'll end up with just thinners. So that's not what you want. So we're going to take our airbrush. I'm still on about 10 PSI. I haven't changed anything. We've got some thinners in there still. So I'm just going to blow that out. Okay, and I'm just going to put a drop of this in here. don't need very much at all make sure you wipe the side of the airbrush off where that's going to run down and then also make sure you wipe the side of the bottle off and either completely leave the lid off or completely screw the lid on okay don't ever just place it because what happens then you pick it up and you think the lid's on it's not and then you drop the paint everywhere so either leave it completely off or screw it completely on okay so to do this i should be doing this in a booth but i'm not so that you guys can see it for the newer modelers out there I'm going to get that out of the way because we don't want brass on our on our um, submarine, do we? <clears throat> so this is gloss black. You can get variations in colour. I've done it myself where you use gloss white, gloss grey. It needs to be gloss. Um, and you could also use matte to get different tones, but for polished surfaces you need to use gloss. And you can get variations in shade, like, especially with your aluminiums, by using whites and greys and stuff. So for example, if you've got some polished aluminium tanks, reservoirs, whatever, in the engine bay of a racing car, you could do one gloss black, one gloss grey, one gloss white, and then when you spray them all with polished aluminium, they will all be completely different colours because you see the black through the paint. So we're going to blow this back, make sure it's nice and mixed up, and then we're going to spray this on very, very lightly. Just check our flow. We don't want to be, you just want to be literally just tinting it. We're not trying to cover it in paint we just want to literally tint the color and as you can see here you can see there now we have a very dark very dark polished brass color okay so we keep going in it will get lighter the idea is that you want to see the black through the paint it's the gloss black that's giving you the gloss this paint isn't glossy Okay, so there you go, there's the dark brass. Now if we go a bit more, gets a bit lighter, there you go, there's your there's your polished brass cylinder. As you can see, it really does look like brass or even bronze. Now if I wanted it lighter, as I said, I could have done it in gloss grey and it would have been a very pale bronze colour or brass colour. So that's that done and you can see I mean it looks quite dark but when you put it against black you can see it is quite a different colour. So that's that done and now mainly people will go you shouldn't ever do this. Pour the paint back in and you can even with low pressure you've got to be careful of this on the edges here because it just runs off. You can even with your airbrush at low pressure you can even spray the remainder of the paint that's in the airbrush back into the bowl. And there you go. So that's how you use the Alclad. Or in these days, um, what's it called? A, I, can't, I, I said it a few minutes ago, didn't I? I can't remember what it's called now. A stand, that's it. <laughs> Had a mental block then. That's what happens when you get old and stupid. Right, I'll see you in a minute and we'll get some pre-shading done. Right, so here we go, um, pre-shading. Again, I'm using about 10 or 12 PSI. I'm using LP5 semi-gloss black, purely because I've got it and it's thinned and it sprays beautifully. 
I would use RP3 flat black, but I've just run out. So um, I'm using the RP5. It doesn't matter because we're going to be going over it with a matte colour anyway. So what we're going to do is the same as we do with aircraft. Check off flow first. Check that it's all good. And we're going to try and do this quite precisely and just over the rivets. Just where the rivets are, I'm going to put in a black shade like so. I hope I don't start getting tip dry with this stuff. If I do, I'll have to stop because we can't afford to have this spattering everywhere. Um, so we come along here now. I think I am getting tip dry, you know. I do actually have some um, retarder. I think I might try a drop of that. I've actually got some here. Let me have a look. Oh, yes, I have got some here. I've put three drops in there. It says use at a maximum concentration of one to ten. That's one part retarder to ten parts paint. So I've put three drops in there. I think that's about right. Doesn't really matter. And I've, all I've done is put the finger over the end, blown black through, just to get a bit of a just to get a bit of a, a mix going on. Um, so we'll see if we get any tip dry now. It should help. We also have the Tamiya lacquer thinners with retarder. I don't think I've used that in this. I am still getting tip dry. And tip dry for the newer models amongst you is when the paint dries in the tip um, and it stops the paint coming out basically. We let this retarder work through it may start doing its job. I'm trying to keep these lines as neat as possible because I want them to be tidy. I've got to be conscious of not breaking this thing is so fragile. So what I'm going to do is just go over all these rivet lines, just like we're pre-shading an aircraft. There we go. And I think we'll go around the, we'll go around the uh, portholes as well. Just basically going to highlight every feature. Go our nose in the top. And the air box, if that's what it's called, if I'm going to call it. Down those rivets there, around the winch. So you get the idea, that's what I'm going to do is just carry on and do that on every feature and it will come back looking like a checkerboard. So I'll see you in a minute. There we go guys, that paint retarder did work, but I didn't get any more tip dry after that. So. Uh, um, very, very good. Right, so you can see now we've done the, the pre-shading and as you see it looks like a patchwork quilt. The lighting is really, the camera's making this look a lot more defined than it really is and this is what generally happens. And when I get this done it's going to look really subtle to my eye but the camera's going to make it look like, you'll, you'll see more of this white than it's, than is really there. Um, in fact I need to go around those little veins there, don't I? I miss those out so we'll just go in with just go and get those touched in there. Just go into the corners. It's, it's basically just pick up every single edge, every single corner. Just highlight it. 
So there we are. I haven't gone around that either, have I? Look at that, I've missed another bit. I'm going to do this now, otherwise I will forget. Around that front mount there for the for the ramrod, as I call it. I think we'll go around that hole as well because the rope's going to go through there. There we are. I think we can call that pretty much a done thing. So there we go. All pre-shaded, all mottled up, ready for a final coat of paint. And I think what I'll do is start with a lighter grey, something like like LP65 perhaps. Um, I don't know, maybe start with a dark grey. Let me have a little think about it and then I'll come back. But uh, it's certainly not going to be painted black, I can tell you that. And I've just ripped off one of the photo etch pieces from the back of there, haven't I? Yes, I have. And I've just knocked it onto the floor. Right. Right, so I've got LP60, NATO Black, and Tammy Lacquer Thinners with Retarder, mixed about 40% thinner, 60% paint. And I'm doing what I'm doing here is just giving it a very light shading coat, so you can still see the blotchiness through there. But it's just taking away the... And I'm going in between the panel lines. What I'm doing with this, I just want to give it a shade. I'm still getting tip dry. And I, I've just put the model down in the booth on a pile of thinners. I can't believe I've just done this. Right, I'll be back in a sec. Yeah, that's something you need to be careful of, guys. And I've just made this stupid mistake. I wiped the side of the jar off when I poured the paint in the airbrush. And then put the model down on top of the rag with all the soft paint. So I've got a black patch there. Luckily it's underneath. I'm not going to worry about it too much. But um, anyway, check the flow. You can see I'm getting tip dry even though I've used that retarder thinners. So mm, I'm going to have to give up, give this up and have a go tonight when it's cooler. But basically all I'm trying, all I'm doing here is just filling in panel by panel just to get that pre-shading sort of subtly hidden away. Just like so. I'm still at about 12 psi, 10 psi, something like that. And the only reason I'm doing this is because if I go straight in with really thin paint, it takes forever to cover and it keeps burning through. I've got tip dry again. It keeps burning through and um, you get the bright white just keeps coming back. So that's why I'm doing this, it's just to break it down. You might be saying to yourself, why didn't I use a darker grey or grey rather than the white? It's because I want the harshness, I want the harsh contrast between the black and the white, which you wouldn't get with a grey and a white. Now obviously there's a million different ways to do this. And I'm not saying that I'm the, the god. I'm just showing you how I'm tackling this. And hopefully you'll like the, the finished effect. As you can see, this is... Uh, this is looking pretty nice already. For the blotchy look. You notice I'm keeping the airbrush going without stopping and that way I shouldn't get tip dry. In case you get the idea, and that's what I'm doing to get this sort of motley effect. And as I say, the camera is really making it stand out. So I guess at the end I'll have to do some pictures and you can see how it looks. Right, so I'm going to get off, get off camera now, get this finished and I'll be back. Right, so that's all done. So that's the LP60 NATO Black. Um, so 6040 dusted on. Then I've gone over with this one here, which is a very interesting colour. It's um, MRP432. It's cowling colour for Japanese aircraft, like on your zeros and stuff. And it has a very definite blue tinge to it. So I've sort of just given it a very light coat of that. And it seems to have sort of brought out all that pre-shading. Um, and given it a little bit of a blue tinge. So I just want to knock that back a bit. 
So I've got LP60, this is all experiment, this is all you'll see me do this for the first time, I'm not doing any tests off camera or anything, this is all just experimenting. So LP65 rubber black, which is a very dark grey, and I've got that thinned, about 90% thinner as 10% paint. And I'm just going to test this underneath first and see how it looks. I'm just going to sort of blow this on and see how it looks. It's thinned with the uh, Tamiya retarder thinners. I just want to get this on and get a sort of dark grey. I don't want it to be jet black. But I want to... my hair there. On. I just want this to knock back that sort of blue colour we've got, but we still want to see the shading coming through. And as you can see, when you've got this heavily thin paint, the shading keeps burning its way through because the thinner in the paint is dissolving the paint that's on top and it's sort of all blending in. It's kind of melding into one lot of paint, so all sorts of things start happening. Just literally want to. This is really smelly now. I'm gonna have to finish this off camera. But basically, you can see that now we've taken away that blue tinge and we've now got this very subtle mottling effect showing through. And I'm gonna keep going until that just shows through, which is why I use heavily thin paint so that you can keep knocking it back. Um, I can show you on here, probably, you can see there the mottling is showing through. If I just you know, this is almost like dirty thinners rather than paint. You can kind of obliterate, there's a hair in there as well. God, there's hairs everywhere. Haven't done that edge, have we? There we go. Do the same on this one. There we go. So I'll just keep going. And then when I come back, you'll see how it looks before we start adding some oils and washes and whatever we'll see what we're going to do right next day now and as you can see all painted and we can see the the blotchiness of the white we put on there coming through as i say keep saying the camera makes it a lot more vivid than it really is so what i'm going to do now is this is all going to be experimentation i've never done anything like this before um so this is all just going to be experimenting so i've got three Modeler's Royal Oil Washes here. I've got the um, the Deep Black, which is just jet black. Black Brown, which is a very dark brown, which is really nice. And Rust, Old Rust. So I'm going to see how these look. Um, I think what I'm going to do is, first of all, I've got to go in with the Rust, first of all, and then I can knock it back if I need to. Because I don't want, the, I don't want it to look like a, sort of a rusty hulk that's just been dragged off the bottom of the ocean. I, I want it to kind of look like it's been used a couple of times. So I think what we'll do is we'll play around with the bottom first. <laughs> Sounds a bit rude, doesn't it? I think we'll play around with the bottom first and just see what sort of effects we could get if we do this, for instance. Just let the wash run in into the nooks and crannies. And I think as it dries, it'll be hardly visible get some more wash on the brush so we can see how that looks and if it looks horrible we could take it off just get some uh, odorless thinners or enamel thinners whatever and take it off we've got the LP paints underneath so we've got a good tough base that's going to uh, that's going to be okay so just remove any pooling just take some of the wash off the brush, just remove anywhere we've got any puddling or anything. Okay, so we can leave that and see how that looks when it dries. I'm not sure what sort of a stain we're going to get from it, but it might look quite good. We shall see. I might just drag that along there, actually. Just to get a hint, as though it's sort of because I should imagine that even after its first time out, it would have, you'd have rust coming from the joints. So there we go. There's the wash on there. So you can see that now when it's wet. 
I'll be back in a couple of seconds for you, about half an hour for me. We'll see how it looks when it's dry. Right, I've moved on a little bit. What I've done, I, I like the way this looks, so I've done the whole thing. I've gone over the whole sub with the with the rust. And <clears throat> as you can see, we've got this sort of staining, which is, again, pronounced by the camera. We've got this staining, and obviously I'm going to go in with a panel wash and get rid of the, the, the rust in the, in the grooves. But we've got this sort of rusty staining around the around the rivets which I like the look of and it kind of gives it a, a used look and as you can see it's sort of not even you can see along this panel here it sort of goes in and out so all I'm doing here the cotton bud I'm just removing the excess wash before it's actually fully dried um, and it just basically leaves like a, a, a sort of of a stain which is which is uneven which is what I'm after you don't want anything to be even and symmetrical and stuff it needs to be all tatty you know um I had Jess hair there and there we go so happy with the way this is looking What I'm doing, as I say, is just rubbing over the, the rust with the cotton bud, and as you can see, it's just removing the majority. So we get this sort of rusty staining around the rivets, which is probably a reality, even if it just had, you know, if it's in the water for 10 minutes, that's probably how it would have been, because they wouldn't have had, you know, um, preservatives and coatings on the metal and special materials that don't rust it would have all been probably hot rolled steel plate which rusts just when you breathe on it it just rusts in the atmosphere hot rolled steel plate because it's so awful but, uh, there we go so I'm going to put some more there because we have no staining around those rivets there. I'm really pleased that when you look at this, how those, I'm, if you remember, I added those rivets from plastic discs. I'm really pleased how they've come out. But uh, there we go. So I'll just carry on doing this, removing this excess, and then um, I'll come back and show you the next step, which I don't know what it's going to be. But as I say, it's all new to me. It's just experimenting live on camera so we'll see how it all goes okay right <clears throat> while I've been off camera I just went in with a black pin wash into all the panel lines just to sort of take the rusty color away from them and I am absolutely over the moon with how that looks now in reality what you're seeing is a glossy finish of oils around the rivets and the actual thing doesn't look like that so I'm going to give it um, a clear coat anyway to flatten it down but um to seal it in but it's, uh, yeah, it's looking really, really good, I think. Uh, it, it's just the look I wanted. It's, it's sort of used. Just, it's like if you had a, a bare metal drum and you chucked it in a swimming pool and then took it out, and then the next morning this is how it would look. Sort of patchy rust, and that's what I want. So I'm happy with that. And uh, as I say, what you're seeing on the camera is very, very... Ex it almost it looks awful on the camera. From what I'm seeing on the camera here, it looks bloody awful. But in reality, it looks great. So I'm going to have to give it a clear coat to seal it all in and everything. And take away... There, there is a slight sheen to somebody who will. So I want to take that away. It's probably where I've been rubbing the paint. It's, a, it's probably a sheen on the paint where it's been buffed. Um, so I'm going to give it, a, I, was, I was just about to do the windows, but I've just noticed the sheen. So I'm going to give it a clear coat. And also the oils attack the mask. So I'm going to have to cover those up again before I um, before I give it a clear coat. So I'll go and give it a flat coat. I'm not sure which one I'll use. Um, I'll probably use the Tamiya LP23 um, on it. Maybe put a little bit of um, flatting agent in it. We shall see. Flat base, just to make it a little bit flatter. But you have to, you have to be careful because you get white dust on it. So, um... I'll get that done and then I'll come back. A lot of firsts going on here <clears throat> and this is the first time I've used LP22 flat base. Now 
OP23 here is thinned with Mr. Color Lovely Thinners and all I did was literally, I stirred the, the flat base up and I literally dipped the stick in twice and put it in the airbrush. So you, you have to use a very, very small amount. I remember I did it years ago with the XF flat base. I can't remember which one that is now. And everything just went white. And you can see on the stick here when it dries, you can end up with a very white, chalky finish. You can see there. And you need to be very careful not to put too much flat base into your flat paint. So literally that was just a, a, a tiny amount. And as you can see, that is a lot flatter than the straight LP23. That's um, really nice. So happy with how that's come out. So we can remove these masks now from here. Okay, there's that one gone. No, it's not. It's still stuck on there. Come off. Get off. There we go. It's gone now. And then there you go. That one's off of there as well. So you can see now we've got the the matte paint, but you've got the shiny window there, which helps. So what I'm doing now is just stick a cocktail stick in these, just to make sure there's no nasties in there. It's going to affect the crystal clear. And what we'll do is we'll get our clear windows done. That'd be it now. If one of these came off, that would be just great. <laughs> that was like three days ago for me, but it was... Um, well, it was part one, wasn't it? I did the, uh, all that work. There was a lot of work in that hole. So we'll get our crystal clear and I'm going to have a cotton bud handy and some water. Get some water down here. Just in case we get the crystal clear on the paint, we're going to make a mop it up straight away. So we'll get the crystal clear on here. Okay, and we need to, first we'll do these sides. What I'm going to do is take some of this away. Do it on a cloth rather than on my hand, otherwise I'll transfer. What I'm going to do is put the crystal clear into the porthole, just like so. Just go around. You can see there, it's basically sealed it up. Now I don't know if I've got enough on here to do another one. No. I think Jess is going to start barking. Yeah, I think she is. I can hear a dog barking outside. I'm afraid I can't turn the camera off. There we go. So I'll get all the others done exactly the same. Let Jess bark her head off and I'll see when they're done. Okay, so you can see them now. You can see them just about dry. Some white bits left in there, but you can see the, the general effect you get when it's dry. You've got like a clear, a clear window. So that's that. Right. So... Moving on. Now, I've fixed the charge into the photo axial carriers there. A couple of drops of black CA on the bottom just to hold it in place. The pivot here, what I've done is drilled it out and got a piece of 0.8 brass rod in there so I can actually pin it in place. Now, I mean, must make sure I don't lose that brass rod. In fact, I need to turn this around. This is easier to put the brass rod in from this side than it is from the other side. So I'm going to put that down there. And then this is going to go on the front here. And I'm going to have to pin it in place. So I think what I'll do is rather than take the brass rod completely out, I think I'll put it in. In one side. Hopefully it will stay there. This is the right side. Obviously one side is more chamfered than the other. I've dropped it now. I'll tell you what, I'll do this off camera because you don't want to watch me do this, it's boring. Right, so that's glued in now. Um, I've put the pin through, I just put a drop of CA in there. And I've got this um, sanding stick on its side because it's holding it in position. So when that glue dries, it should stay in that position, hopefully. Um, yeah, it's... The glue's not dry enough yet, it's breaking it away. What I'll do, I'll just put a drop of this um, MIG ammo accelerator onto this. I'd rather use it this way than spray it. Just put a drop on there and that should help that go off. So, there we go. We'll leave that for a second. Yeah, that feels quite rigid. It's not strong enough to hold its own weight. But we've got rigging to go on now. So... 
was kind of hoping this would support itself because I want to use easy line. I've got heavy easy line here, uh, which is quite heavy because this is 35th scale. I want it to be quite heavy. And I'm kind of hoping this is going to be strong enough to keep it up. So I've cut this piece off. And we'll just find the middle roughly there. So that's going to wrap around like that. Of course, it's not playing ball because the camera's on. Get under there. Go on. Right. So that's going to wrap around like that. And then these two will then come up to the front here, to the bow, and get glued in. So what I want to do here, I'm going to have to do it off camera. There's no way I can do this on camera, guys. What I'm going to do is, is wrap it round, have it wrapped round once like it is, and glue it in position <clears throat> so that it doesn't just slide back up. There's no way I'm going to do that on camera because I need to use my magnifier and everything. But I'm just going to put a drop of CA underneath. Let, let, this, let, the, um, let the easy line sit in it for a second. It'll go off. And then I can carry on and put them in at the top. And hopefully I'll be able to see, see, show you that when it's done. Okay, so that's done. And it is very, very flimsy. As you can see, we've got the line there going from the winch down to the charge. And we've got the lines there holding the the front in. Now, I literally just tapped with my finger and bent the photo etch mounting. So it is extremely flimsy. <laughs> so there we go. Um... So really happy with how it's coming out actually. So all we've got to do now is fit these air pipes. So what I'm going to do with these, <clears throat> I'm going to put a drop of black super glue on them. Black because it's black and it won't show up. And because it doesn't dry instantly, which is nice. It gives you a bit of time to play with it. There we go. So that could just sit there. And then put a bit on this one. And that one can pop into there. I'm going to get a cotton bud. Make a point and just remove that bit of excess glue I got on there. Draw this glue, it dissolves the paint. So I'm going to have a little, I'll go around and touch a couple of little areas in. get those positioned like that. Oh dear dear dear. Sometimes you wish this glue would set a bit faster. So I'm just going to put a drop of clear with it and it kind of gives you a 50-50. You get the elasticity of the black and the drying time of the clear. There we go. So that's it. It's finished. So I've just got to go around and do some little touch-ups. I've got a touch-up here where I scratch where I cut the, the string. Um, basically here what I did was wrapped it around the front, came up, went through, came up the side and went through, so I ended up with two tails hanging out, pulled them so it was just enough to support it, glued it and then cut them off with a pair of scissors and um, yeah, managed to scratch the paint on this one. I've also noticed the paint is wearing off a little bit on the back here, on the, um, on the uh, propeller shroud. But other than that, it's done. Um, I'm happy with it. Obviously, if you want to do one of these, you could go to town with the weather and add moss and everything, and it would look wonderful. But um, for me, this is going to go on a shelf and never get touched again, because this is, you can see how this is still, I mean, if I do that, you watch how long that swings for. It's just, it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. It's so, so flimsy. So anyway, um... I hope you've enjoyed that. I'll get some pictures up and, uh, and we'll go from there. So uh, thanks for watching this. This has been part three of the build of this model. Sent to me by the lovely Wendy. Thank you very much, Wendy. So, um, yeah, there we go. It's certainly not for beginners, but it's a lot of fun if you just want a quick build because there's not much to it. And there's not, you know, there's no detailed painting or anything. There's no interiors to do. There's no, um, yeah, there's photo etch and that, which is a bit, daft in places but as we know with a lot of these uh, short run kits they tend to be like that so um anyway as i say thanks for watching glad you've enjoyed it if you are new to the hobby hopefully you've learned something that's certainly from the first two videos maybe not so much from this one but um yeah i'm happy with how it looks probably could have done a lot better but it's um it's what it is it's it's a nice little model i'll see you all soon thanks for watching bye for now